Today I'm going into the Ambassador Hotel. Well, not literally because it got torn down, but I have been in it and I'll be showing you some of the photographs from my visit in the hotel. We had a, a really, we had a good exhibit on the Kennedys in the Dearly Departed Tours Museum. And we had an old Bellman's costume from the Ambassador Hotel on display and a lot of other artifacts from the hotel. And I have some of them actually here with me now. The Bellman's outfit, uh, outfit is, is in storage somewhere, as is a lot of the Kennedy memorabilia. One of my favorite pieces of memorabilia that, that I have on display in my office is this, which is a Pray for Peace, 1963 JFK, 68 Martin Luther King Jr., and 68 Bobby Kennedy. And that's one of the reasons, probably the most famous reason, uh, uh, that the Ambassador Hotel is historic. Uh, it actually opened in 1921. It was on Wilshire Boulevard. And it was uh, owned by a, a family by the name of Shine, S-C-H-I-N-E. And I actually have a couple of the, the old matchbooks from the Ambassador Hotel. And 1921, it was New Year's Day, 1921. And then a couple of months later, the famous Coconut Grove nightclub opened up within the Ambassador Hotel. And that was legendary. It was it was decorated with palm trees that came from uh, a Rudolph Valentino movie, I think it was The Sheik. And if you ever saw The Aviator with Leonardo DiCaprio uh, as Howard Hughes, they recreated the Ambassador Hotel in The Aviator. And it was, or I should say the um, the uh, Coconut Grove, they recreated that in the, in the movie. And it was spectacular. It was like, it was just really kind of neat to see that. And so this is one of the original, um, well, this is the Coconut Grove, the world famous Coconut Grove. And on the back of these are the Shine Company name, the people that owned it. So you can see the different styles of matchbooks they had. Here's another one, Shine Hotels, and with a different ambassador logo on it. And this is actually from the 30s. This is, is more indicative of the aviator, uh, the, the, the time of that, uh, the uh, early days of the Ambassador Hotel. And it was a Hollywood hangout. I mean, it was, you know, they had Charleston contest that Joan Crawford competed in. And, and so many people, Judy Garland performed their Sinatra, of course. And, uh, but most famously, uh, the assassination of Bobby Kennedy. I found, here's another, this is cool. I found this matchbook too. And I'm not sure of the era. I'm imagining it's sixties because if you were to look inside of it, it says, uh, after the show, maybe it's on this one too. Oh, this is different. This one says after the show. We suggest a nightcap in our widely romantic La Cave Pigelle, I guess is what they would call it. It says Watusi Orchestra and Go-Go Dancer in, in the Ambassador Hotel. So I'm imagining that's 1960s. Also, in my travels, I've acquired a spoon from the Ambassador. It has the Ambassador A on it, which was also in, uh, in the carpeting as you walk in the front doors. I have a piece of the Ambassador Hotel stationery. And in 2000, uh, no, it's actually the hotel itself closed in 1989 as an official hotel. And it stood there on Wilshire Boulevard vacant for several years. And they finally got permission to demolish the place. But we were able to get into it one last time because uh, the Associated Press um, reporter, Linda Deutsch, had a tour. And the tour was built or designed for crime writers. And she covered the RFK trial of Sir Han Sir Ham being tried for... Uh, uh, the murder of Bobby Kennedy and she hosted the tour and she did a Manson thing too and actually the Ambassador Hotel is where the Manson family were uh, the trial during the trial the jurors were sequestered for nine months in the Ambassador Hotel they had to be um, they they spent Christmas season in the Ambassador Hotel you know isolated from their families uh, it, it's a fascinating story
this is a picture of uh, Bobby Kennedy doing his um, his uh, famous speech on to Chicago and will and will win there. And he's in the uh, the room is called the Embassy Room where he gave that speech, the Democratic Convention. And the pantry door is over on this side of it uh, where he left and he was shot in the pantry. Uh, this is actually a piece of the pantry floor that Bobby Kennedy landed on. I'll put this up against here so you could see it. I acquired this, um, gosh, many, many years ago from someone who worked on a film set. See, when it closed in 1989, it was sitting there empty for probably 15 years. Uh, I, there's there's math in particular that I don't know right off the top of my head. But it was used. Tons of television shows and movies were shot in the Ambassador Hotel because it was empty. It was a hotel, and they could blow shit up. So they had, you know, like in the movie SWAT, they blew up rooms. And it was used in, gosh, so many things. Starsky and Hutch. with a rifle outside, you're going to have to take him right through the front, okay? A car is going to be waiting. Thank you. One of the last things they made in the Ambassador Hotel was the movie Bobby, all about the assassination of Bobby Kennedy. And... It was fascinating is they, they started destroying the hotel in 2005, I think it was, was the year that they started destroying it. But Bobby, the film, while they were destroying the hotel on one end of it, uh, like this, this is what it ended up, you know, as it was being destroyed, the movie Bobby was being uh, filmed in the front entrance. This is sort of the back. And this is where the coconut grove, this is actually a piece of the coconut grove that I have right here. And when they demolished it, I paid a workman for a few of the bricks. And when we went on that tour with Linda Deutsch, this, this is some of the ceiling from right above where Bobby Kennedy's speech was here in the embassy room. So the hotel looked like this for many years, just sitting on Wilshire Boulevard, empty, except for productions uh, behind a fence. The beautiful sculpture at the driveway uh, still stands there today, actually. But back uh, at the time when I went to visit the hotel, this is what it looked like, uh, just sort of falling apart. And this was an addition they made for the Coconut Grove in the, I think, in the 70s. It looks pretty 70s to me. And when we got there, it was you know sad looking totally sad looking there was even some damage on the uh, roof from a truck that had clearly hit it but this is the beautiful entrance way to the ambassador hotel this is the way it looked at its in its grand days and this is what it looked like when we were there the flagpoles were still there and amazingly that uh that clock which is the centerpiece of that doorway was still there and uh it looked very much the way it did back when they made the movie that thing you do several movies actually were shot in that area of the hotel here's the entrance the valet uh, would pick up your car there or uh, you drop off your car there and this is the entrance to the hotel from that area and in, as soon as you get into that hotel area you'll see the beautiful a in the uh, carpet Monkey suit you got on there, but you still can't park here. Oh, don't look so sad, Lloyd. We'll be fashionably late. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm kind of drunk. <laughs> 
I'm trying to remember the layout of the hotel when I was there, and it's a bit foggy for me, but you'll see, well, this is obviously the main uh, lobby, and you'll see that fountain that's in the middle a little bit later on when the auction was held. And uh, then we went, I saw the front desk. Now, the place wasn't lit. It was almost all dark. And But that's the front desk, and I managed to uh, peek behind that desk into the office area, and there were what I interpret to be like these safe deposit boxes, maybe for the guests in the hotel. It looks like you need two keys to, uh, to open them, so I imagine that's safe deposit boxes. And here's the lobby elevators, which I have seen in loads of films. Those are pretty distinctive. Looks like those emblems, the ambassador emblems on each door. And this is a hallway. Different shops uh, were on either side of probably a barber shop. And I know that the Blue Book Modeling Agency was in there. This is the famous cafe, the Green Cafe. They had very distinctive wallpaper. Again, that showed up in the movie Bobby. It showed up in, in that thing you do. It's a, a very recognizable uh, room whenever they shot in the hotel. And there was a sign pointing us to the Coconut Grove and the Embassy Room. And, uh, you know, a little bit foggy. It was a long time ago that these, these pictures were taken, these poor pictures. But that was the hotel directory. And we ascended that staircase. My, my picture's labeled ascending the staircase to the Coconut Grove. Now, I'm pretty sure once we got to that, we went down some sort of hallway and then came back down again these stairs which uh, was actually the other entrance to the hotel that I showed you earlier with the damage to the uh, canopy. And this one's a bit funny. It's labeled Hall to the Grove. I, I don't really uh, recognize it, but this is the Coconut Grove uh, doorway. And it looks considerably different than it did back in the days of the 1920s and 1930s. As you can see, it's been modified considerably. Uh, the stage may be in the same place that it was back in the day. It's, uh, it's hard to tell. But it was a pretty big room. And uh, you can see it's, it's a large staging area. And I did go behind it to peek through the backstage uh, curtains to see what it would have looked like looking from the back to the front of the stage and now I'm standing on the stage. And this is the hallway that goes from the Coconut Grove to the kitchen area. And the kitchen area still looked intact. It still looked like it could be operating as a kitchen today. I imagine it was used in a kitchen many, many times in movies. And here's this freight elevator. It showed up in the Starsky and Hutch clip that I showed you earlier on. So we finally got to the embassy room where the infamous uh, Bobby Kennedy speech took place on June 5th of 1968. And walking into that room was pretty, pretty amazing because it was like being on the Titanic or in a shipwreck because it was in such disrepair. And uh, there's the stage that Bobby was standing on. But you'll see like the ceilings. Look at the friezes on the walls. Those came up for auction too. I wish I would have got one of those. But look at that. It was just decaying. Uh, the, the ceiling was falling in. The um, just just caved in pieces of the floor, pieces of the ceiling laying everywhere. And all those beautiful fixtures and fences uh, were still sitting in there just waiting for demolition. I wish I would have taken more. I get a lot of crap for uh, for taking stuff from places, but man, I wish I would have taken more. And I wish I would have taken more photographs. So there's Bobby Kennedy just as he was ending his speech. And he walked off this stage towards us to the pantry doorway. And uh, and that's where he met his uh, his death through those doors, got into the pantry and that's what it looked like after Bobby was killed. And it was interesting, too, because we went in there. They let us take pictures everywhere we wanted to go everywhere. And they said, you can take every picture you want all over the hotel except for the pantry. And I'm like, wait, wait a second. That's like the whole point. And uh, that's why this tour was there. And they were standing guard. But I still managed to uh, to take a couple of pictures. And that's the exact spot on the floor where where Bobby Kennedy laid. And this is a press photograph, just you know, wide open um, before demolition. Man, that was something being in there. It was really cool. But so many movies and television shows were shot in the Ambassador Hotel. Uh, after our tour, 
and it was for sure going to be demolished, they had an auction of the Ambassador Hotel's fixtures, light fixtures, the mailbox, the valet parking uh, key box, uh, the safe deposit boxes that were behind the front desk, the fountain that was in the front of the, uh, of the lobby. The, all these things were being auctioned off. And the auction was pretty cool, I mean, to see at the beginning of the art, there were like doors and lamps, just normal like 70s and 80s lamps, not particularly nice, but when it first started out, doors were, you know, hotel doors, room doors were going for like 20, 30 bucks. And by the time it ended, you know, they were they were going for, you know, several hundred dollars at that point because there was just a hype to it. But being there for that auction was pretty, pretty awesome. So but, here are some of the things that were on display to be auctioned. These signs that were on the ceilings throughout the hotel. This is just a chandelier from from one of the ballrooms probably they, these are the freezes that i showed you from the embassy room where bobby kennedy gave his speech they pried him off the walls and one more shot of the famous fountain there's just disco balls and pottery and beds were for sale this was the safe which would have been a really awesome souvenir and the mailbox one more time these are iconic pieces of the hotel you know these were these were very distinctive they show up in a lot of different things and all of this taking place in front of this albatross, this massive, massive shipwreck of a building just staring over us as these pieces of history were being, you know, thrown to the wind, scattered about. And I wish I got more. But being there for the demolition was awesome and not in, in the completely the opposite way. There was a parking structure that was nearish to the Ambassador Hotel. Um, I guess you call them cabanas little mini apartments that were separated bungalows and there was a parking structure um sort of looking above them so you could go up there and see this amazing spans i think it was 43 acres i may have said that before but it was a massive piece of property and you could go up there and watch them slowly chipping away i've got some phone footage and i've got a lot of uh, uh just just photographs of them taking it away in fact our first documentary dearly departed volume one showed quite a bit of that. So that footage is poor footage, but you got the idea. And watching that hotel being destroyed little by little was really, it was agonizing actually, because you just kept staring at this beautiful symbol of old Hollywood and American history and just watching it dwindle away. The LA Unified School District decided they were going to use the property and build another school. And they made a deal. They said they were going to save the Coconut Grove. That's the stage entrance to the Coconut Grove. They said they were going to keep the, the Coconut Grove there, but then they decided, no, actually we're not. And uh, I think a small portion of the Coconut Grove was ultimately uh, saved, like a wall from it or something like that. But just look at that. That's that's the grove from the side of it, and um, that was the front of it. And watching it slowly, slowly get destroyed. Um, I think Chris Nichols, my buddy Chris Nichols, said something like a fire would have been more merciful than watching this, this, this beautiful landmark just slowly, slowly dwindling away. And ultimately just became rubble, just became rubble. It's, um, it was really depressing. It was really depressing. But being in the hotel before it was being destroyed with Linda Deutsch, the AP reporter, walking through the hotel, the front entrance, and walking into the grand lobby and seeing the cafe and seeing where the beauty salon was, and then going into the Coconut Grove, which looked nothing like it did in its glory days. It was, you know, just an empty room. So many people I know 
in LA had their like senior proms at the Ambassador Hotel in the Coconut Grove, which is really kind of a cool badge of honor. And uh, and being in that space and then going into that pantry where, where Bobby Kennedy was shot was really something. And it's it was funny about the tour, too, is they're like, oh, take all the pictures you want, take all the pictures you want, but not in the pantry, like the most historic location. And it's to me, it's quite sad that the hotel is gone uh, because it's an, it's it's history. It's American history. One of the most important events in American history, the assassination of Bobby Kennedy, who was probably going to become president. So it, it was an important part of history. Now, they tore down the hotel eventually. They built a school on the property that looks exactly like the hotel. It takes up the same amount of space, but still the, the hotel, or part of the hotel, the main entrance, is incorporated into the high school. So it is the Bobby Kennedy High School. It locate, it takes up the same amount of space as the Ambassador Hotel. It's a shame they couldn't, you know, renovate it. I understand why they didn't. It was in such poor shape. But um, but it's it's wild to think the front entrance of the Ambassador Hotel, that wonderful circular entrance that has a really distinctive clock uh, uh, right above the doorway. As the hotel was being destroyed, historians were still, you know, upset about just the fact that uh, such an important American event, such as the assassination of Bobby Kennedy, that the pantry should have been preserved. And, you know, there were lots of arguments about it being a ghoulish attraction and horrible souvenir hunters imagine wanting a piece of that historic uh, place. But they say when the uh, pantry, uh, when they tore it down, the pantry was photographed and measured and two foot diameter samples of its wall, floor and ceiling were taken. And the contents, including a warming table and a closet door were placed in a 40 foot long storage bin and moved across town and it probably still sits there somewhere and people pass it a thousand times a day and have no idea what exactly they are passing uh, it, it's a real shame that that place is gone now that was real that was real history and being in that pantry and actually having this piece that Bobby Kennedy landed on, you know, yeah, of course it's morbid, but it's history. And, um, it's, it's really, it's quite awesome. And that's not a positive expression or adjective to use in this case. It was awesome to be in that, um, in that room and to be in that hotel. My buddy, Steve Goldstein and I went on that tour, uh, on that tour with Linda Deutsch. It was it was really something. And I'll, I'll put, obviously, this conversation is going to be peppered with uh, with photographs from all these, uh, the times I was in there and some of the footage of the demolition. But Maybe it's only a Los Angeles thing, but there was actually a funeral service held for the ambassador across the street at the Gaylord building. Uh, you may have seen the video I did uh, recently about the hauntings of the Gaylord and the murders of the Gaylord. And there was a memorial wreath outside for the ambassador, which it was directly across the street. And actually the empty lot was lit up. So it was quite moving actually to uh to see this empty lot and there was a display of the ambassador's history in the lobby of the gaylord and diane keaton actually spoke at the event as well because she was part of the la conservancy trying to to save the hotel but that's the way it was and that's the way it was and that beautiful cool 70s entrance and just dwindling away and that beautiful that beautiful circular i'm glad that's still there anyway but boy that was depressing watching it go so depressing so here i am once again with a stupid brick in my hand uh because i can't afford big buildings or i can't afford to save buildings but i can grab a brick and i can hold it in my hand and this is like this is like holding history to me and uh yeah it's 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 something else. So anyway, that's that's my Ambassador Hotel story. So thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Uh, if you've got a second to sign up to my um, Patreon page, I certainly appreciate it because that keeps my channel going, keeps me going. And if you like it and subscribe it or whatever, I thank you for your attention. I thank you for your time. And until next time. You heard me. 